Oh hey, this is SCARM, Simple Computer Aided Railway Modeler. You use it to plan out your track. Simple my art. Hello YouTubes, welcome back to Scott Rails. I'm Dave. Now, I wanted to start laying some tracks soon, so I did the right thing and I downloaded a free track planning software called SCARM, which I'm sure if you've got the time and patience, then it's a really good system. But personally, I like to just lay stuff down on the track or on the, the layout board and see what's going to work. The good thing about the SCARM system is, well, one of the many good things actually is when you add lots of sections of track and crossovers and all sorts of things, it adds it to a parts list so that you can go with a shopping list to your favourite hobby store and say I need 15 curves, I need 18 straights, whatever. I've already got all this, the, the track and stuff and it's not exactly to spec, so I have to make work what I've got. So, my lovely new neighbours, Rec, gave me a 2% incline set Woodland Scenics. So I'm just going to plonk it down and just see how much height I can get for the, the space I've got and how gradual a rise I can, or how steep a rise I can get away with for the eventual height of the gradient I want. So I have got some of those T-pins. I'm going to pin this all down and just, just see how, just how much space you really need for a 2% incline. So what I did learn from SCARM is if I'm going to use a 2% incline, it will need to start around here because it's going to curve around there, go up that entire wall, and I kind of want it to get to height as it comes around this corner. This whole section here will be a raised section. It will continue along. I might have a station up there with a, a siding, and then it will start coming down at this point and use this entire wall for the decline. I'll be doing some sort of crossover at this section. So instead of going all the way along that wall, it's going to curve round to this section here and there'll be a bridge for when the track goes underneath it there. So as I say, I know I need all this length, entire wall for a 2% incline, but let's put that to the test, shall we? I've got my incline sections in ascending order of height. I have got a couple of sections of 18 radius curved track because that's what I'm using. I've got some normal little pins that I can use for the first, uh, just the first section really, and then I'll need to move on to these T pins. Right, let's do it. Let's move most of this over there. Yeah, something like that. Right, let's tack it down. I think I'm going to start with the middle of the the curve, and then I'm going to have the equal amounts of curving going round. So it doesn't have to be exact. I'm going to estimate the middle is about there. You know what? I'm going to get tape measure because I could be way out. Right there. Okay. Oh, which bit was I using? This one. Right. I don't want it too close to the wall because then I won't get any scenery. That'll do. Good thing about these pins. They fit in between the, the railway ties, so I'll be able to lift the track out. Hmm, it's getting quite close to the front, but I did start in the middle, so I guess this is where it's going to have to be. So obviously I can't use a 22 radius.
So far, so good. Right, let's do the same with the back section and then obviously the the straight section on the far wall will be relatively simple. Unless I make it relatively hard. Okay, that'll work. So the track will come round here, start its incline here. Either have a water feature there or a grassy area as it starts its climb. I might make a bit more of a meander as it goes up the hill. That kind of looks a bit boring. And then once it gets round that curve, it will reach its maximum height there. And then I'll just have a straight bit of thin plywood going from this point across. But it's going to be deeper because I'm going to have a maybe a station up there with a siding. But the tricky part is when it comes back down because I don't have the same amount of length on this wall. It's a foot shorter and I do want it coming from there over to this side. So I don't know whether to get another Woodland Scenics incline kit. I could even make it a 3% and then it will... Obviously, it would struggle a bit more to get up a 3% than a 4 but it could just come down that way, like gravity do its work. I have some decisions to make, because I don't want to be spending a fortune on more of these Woodland Scenics incline kits. They're quite expensive. Okay, now that I know that the incline is going to work where I thought it would, I can get back to work on planning the track. I just had to visualise where it was going to be on the layout and how much space I had front and back. Now I've got a better idea. So I'll see you in a few weeks when I've got a plan. So it's been a few days and I've learned something very important about making track plans. And that is, I hate making track plans. I prefer it the old school way when you just lay stuff out and see what works and what doesn't work. So that's exactly what I've done. I've changed this curve very slightly by adding one small section of straight here. Now that obviously means that the curve goes closer to that wall and this comes closer to the front. But it gives me much more space in the centre because this is going to be a town kind of deal. Because beforehand it was coming round here and then curving the way up there. It was just a wasted space. So there's much more space there. And I do have something quite interesting that I'll be adding to this section here. But we'll get that to in a later video. Now instead of using the incline all the way up, I'm just going to use a bit of wood. Because it's relatively straight. I do have a slight curve. Just so that it's not a boring straight line up a mountain. But you'll see here that that angle is... No bueno. However, all I need to do is put some weight in this section. Just to smooth out the join for there. Obviously, it will that mean that that will get a bit steeper briefly and then it will level out up here. Because I want this to, again, I'm going to be using the curved incline material, this kind of stuff, just for the curve. 
because obviously you, you want the curve on an incline to be as gentle as possible because you've got two forces acting against you. So that's going to curve up on a 2% and meet up here because I want this as high as possible and that's about as high as I can go. In this section here, we'll have the main line at the back. There'll be a turnout coming in here going to a siding or station or both. I'll probably get enough room there for a station. A track going next to the station and a, a siding for a couple of locos to sit. This section here is going to be the 2% coming round all the way. It might go a bit steeper there and come round here. And this would be an industrial area. No idea what I'm doing here yet. So for now, I'm going to focus on the mainline loop and try and get that all semi-laid. Not permanent, obviously. I still need to put real bed, track bed down. So give me a few hours or 10 and I'll bring you back and see where we're at just with the mainline loop. And we are back with some modifications. Let me show you. This section has stayed the same, 2% incline, roughly 2%, then it goes to about 4% here and levels off to 2%. So it's only about a foot and a half that's like, it gradually goes up to about three and a half, four percent 4%, levels off at 2 I decided not to use the Woodland Scenics incline kit for this section. It was much easier just to use a nice rounded section and it's fairly uniform. I will have a couple of bridges here. There'll be a big valley. Well, it won't be that big. It'll only be about four inches, but it'll be a valley with a river at the bottom and it will come down here and then there'll be more bridges. Anyway, getting on. My station area actually has a slight curve. So it starts fairly high, but it starts sloping down that way. So I decided to use another solid curve here and then use the rest of my Woodland Scenics 2% all the way around here. I'm just going straight this time. I'm not doing the curve all the way around here, and then the train falls off and everyone dies. However, I don't have any 2% incline kit left, but I do have some 4% incline kit left. This was just on its own. I've not used this anywhere else. So with the help of this, which is a hot wire foam cutter, I can cut this down to a 2% gradient and I could actually get possibly three sections of this to finish off that incline coming down the way and we will be done and ready to test out some track. So let me, sh let me show you how I'm going to hopefully cut this to the perfect size. Just by chance the last 2% riser I've got finishes at one and a half inches high. And if I put this length of wood here and this length of wood here and measure there one and a half inches high so i've also just checked and the two percent section goes it drops half an inch per section so if i have this section at one and a half to join what i've already got then the end of this section needs to be one inch one inch on this not one inch high you get me so all I have to do is lift this section up to one, try and make it as straight as possible, clamp this together, run the hot wire along there, and I should have a perfect section of 2% in theory. Give it a shot. I brought it over this side of the layer, I've got much better light. So we're semi-clamped at the moment. I don't want to go too tight, I might distort things. So we have got one and a half inches there, just under one there, bring that up there, clamp it a little bit tighter, so we're still at 1%, however, we want this to be straight, so use something straight, needs to come up a little bit in the middle, bit of a juggling act. Pretty good there. I'm going to clamp it a little bit tighter. Clamp 
final check height, little nip. Okay, I suppose we better switch on this magic tool. Just see what happens. Okay, so I've never used this before, so it could be a completely desert, a complete disaster, or, or amazing magic. On off switch, we are on. Do not touch that. Apparently, apparently it only takes five seconds to heat up. I can smell it. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to test it just on any random bit of foam. Just to see how quickly I have to move, that makes sense, right? Okay, let's try this random bit of foam. Probably not ideal to do it directly over your track, but hey. Nothing. Oh, I switched it off. It's handy to have an on-off switch, but uh, <laughs> If you're forgetful like me, then you forget you switched it off. That was five seconds, right? Okay, we'll give it a shot. Oh my God, it's fast. Oh my goodness, it's fast. Wow, right, let's do it. Now we know how fast we can go. Ready? Wire is not gonna fill, mate. Nice and easy, I'm not putting too much tension on the wire. Obviously, it's going to cool down a little bit as you're working. So I wouldn't be too tempted to go like the clappers. You could snap your wire and that could be a pain. So far, it's behaving. Further away there. I'm loving this so far. Please don't snap. Keep on working. I'm just going to hold the top, the, the bit that I've already done, in case it decides to flop about. I was just checking that it hasn't remelted itself back on, but no, we're good. So I'm really not putting a lot of pressure on this at all. I'm watching the flex of the wire, and if it gets too out of shape, then I'll slow down. But so far, it's not having any issues whatsoever. And we're done. Let's switch this thing off. Move it out of the way. Do not touch that for about two hours. Let's see how it turned out. Oh, look at that. Seriously, guys, I couldn't ask for more perfection than that. Let's take it over to the track area and see if it lines up. Da -da 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 -da. It's a tiny bit higher, but once I get the cork bed down, it'll be fine. That's nothing to do with the cutter, nothing to do with my bad measurements. That is absolutely brilliant. So the question is, am I gonna have enough to complete this incline? Ugh, even if I don't, as long as I can cover most of it, I can make up the rest with a bit of hardwood or hardboard. Very happy with that. You know what, I will do a full review on that little tool. I got it on Amazon, I'll put a link down below if you want one. But I'll do a full review because I'll be using it for sculpting and making hillsides and that kind of thing. So, fantastic, excellent. Not too expensive either. Right, let me fire on, get my incline finished, and then I'll tell you what's happening next. My mainline loop structure is now complete. And I tell you what, when you get around to this section, this shows just how much space distance you need if you're going to lay 2% gradient incline. It's a lot of space. But that means I shouldn't have any trouble with my locos getting up, at least not that side. This side, as I said before, it does go up to about a 4% just in that. So maybe just come down the hill this way. Don't go up. <laughs> Might have to double up the power. Next step then would be to lay some cork track bed. Actually, next step would be to cover the incline so that any future ballast doesn't fall down all the, the gaps in the foam incline. So I need to cover that, 
then cork bed, then track. But before I lay track, I need to decide what I'm doing with the rest of the layout because I'm going to have to have some turnouts with my point to point track. So that's what I'm going to be working on next before I lay track. I might, I might test that incline just with some random track to make sure that even a local goes up on its own. Maybe we'll see in the next one, right? Next video could be very interesting. It involves a solution to a tiny problem I have. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye for now.